and it's Terminator Genesis. Genesis, sorry. <laughs> Ryan? Yeah, I really don't hope that doesn't become a trend. I mean, we've seen that, obviously, we've got the Fantastic Four arts, Fantastic. we've got Fantastic, the four in the middle of Fantastic, yeah. and you've got Taken 3, that was, the Te- three was in the middle. Do Tekken, Tekken 3. Uh, and then we'll have to Yeah, uh-huh. and yeah. obviously now Ter- we've got Terminator Genesis. Just Genesis. spell it Genesis. Mm-hmm. Stop trying to be edgy, okay? Like, there's no need. Right, so anyway, um, Terminator Genesis, um, directed by Alan Taylor, he's done a few um, Game of Thrones episodes, you might recognise him from Thor the Dark World as well, obviously probably the the, mo- the least well-received film of all the Marvel Universe, I suppose. I suppose. Yeah, um, so Iron, Iron Man 2. Yeah, pushes it close, I guess. Mm. But, uh, yeah, that and them two, both yeah, sequels. Those two. Uh, so it's the fifth film in the franchise, and basically this is what they wanted to do, and I, I won't say if it's successful yet, they wanted it to ask as a, a sort of a recon for the entire franchise, so basically wipe the slate clean, put everything on a new board, and just say, this is where we're going to start off, this is the, the new canon, I suppose. And uh, obviously, Terminator 1, Stone Cold Classic, as it's sort of, I mean, it's the archetypal chase film in Hollywood nowadays, it's just this unstoppable killing machine coming after you, it's the role Arnie was born to play, You just it's just this hulk of metal, this undying killing machine coming after you completely, and the Terminator 2, obviously incredible action film, just as well done by James Cameron, and it's just, you know, both incredible films that everyone loves, and then Terminator 3 wasn't quite as good not, not panned but it wasn't as well received as this one Terminator 4 was because you know Christian Bale just isn't unless he's in some certain films he's not very good lead is he I mean I wouldn't say uh, he's, he's weak in a lot of stuff I haven't seen Terminator 4 I'm not going to watch that no. No, but you all remember his no. meltdown don't we yeah that's the one thing I do know of Terminator Salvation is that rant the rant which you yeah. should which you should pretty much should in character. search up if you uh, haven't heard it yeah so obviously um, coming into this massive fan of Terminator 1 and 2 you know, some defence in number three. It's it's decent enough, but obviously after number four, I just didn't care anymore really for Terminator. Never really have that much. So I was still, you know, not optimistic at all about this because the trailers and everything else just make it look awful. And there's a big thing in it that I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. And obviously, just everyone was just so downbeat about it because it's not a franchise that's totally loved anymore outside of number one and two. Uh, in the year 2029, John Connor basically is leading the resistance against the machines. He's played by Jason Clark this time, and not. Uh, the who a guy from the first the first two and uh, obviously Christian Bale in number four, he's leading the resistance against the machines just like the original timeline. He sends Kyle Reese, his lieutenant, this time played by Jay Courtney, who's as as bland as they come really as an actor, I guess, in an action film, back to intercept the machines' last attempt to win the war. Uh, a T one a T eight hundred Terminator has gone back in time to kill Sarah Connor, John's mother, so that the resistance never forms and Skynet, the force that controls the machines, wins the war. So so far, so Terminator one, it's all the same. So. The original Arnie Terminator lands in 1984 Los Angeles in what is basically a shot-for-shot recreation of the same scene in the original film up to the part where he costs the bike thugs. It is exactly the same. I don't know if it's if they did reshoot that for the purposes of the new film. Or I mean, they must have done. Yeah, probably. It, I mean, that's what it looks like anyway. So um, the old Arnie turns up just in time to fight them, but it's this, like that's the thing. I mean, it, it is it is exactly the same from Terminator One, and then the old Arnie comes along. Of course, Out of nowhere. James Cameron has said that when he saw the film, he, this is real promotional material for the film. He said that he saw his own film and he was like blown away by mm-hmm. it. But the thing is, like, he's he's big friends with Arnie, so he's. I don't know if that's Arnie asking him for a favor to pull through, or if it's just him just doing that. Mm. So yeah, so so far Terminator One until all the Arnie turns about of nowhere with a shotgun. I've been waiting for you, and then comes in just unloads on him, and you know that was. I like that. I like that. You know, it's it is nostalgic, not nostalgic in the way as some films are for me. You know, it was because I like Terminator One and Two very much. You know, they were really good action films. You Liam watched Terminator Two just last night, didn't you? Well, I watched Terminator One on Saturday, and I watched Terminator Two last night, and. I, just, I got angry after watching Terminator 2 because they're so perfect. Just angry mm-hmm. at the thought that they would even dare to make more after that. Of course, they did. And this is the third one they've made since. It's just, it, it, mm. I don't know, it's, it, it's a franchise of diminishing returns. I think that's the best way to put it. It's just, really, the, the, if, if I was going to do it, you would just you go from Terminator 4 as bad as it was. You just continue and not just make a mishmash of what this is. But anyway, uh, uh, I'll leave that for now. So it turns out that the Sarah Connor this time around, played by Amelia Clark, who obviously people will recognise mostly from Game of Thrones, not in the, the white blonde hair combo that she's usually in this time, straight jet black hair. She's not the fragile weight just that everyone expects Sarah Connor to be anymore, but she's instead in full Linda Hamilton mode already. And it turns out that Arnie's nice guy too, 800, has raised Sarah as a guardian after her parents were murdered 10 years ago. 
and that's just basically scratching the surface of all the wibbly wobbly timey wimey plot this diversion this film takes over the, the course of its was it two and a bit hours just over two just over, just over two just over two hours I mean, it just takes so many plot diversions up on that one it's be, it is basically establishing a brand new canon this is a, a new timeline for Terminator to go into this film for me was relatively doomed not off the ill will of the previous sequels but also because they spoiled a big twist on the marketing it's just on the po- I mean, it's not even a spoiler to say this because it's on the poster it is on the main poster. If you go onto Wikipedia, if you go onto Rotten Tomatoes, you will see it. It is in the trailer as well. It is all. It is everywhere in the marketing, and in the film, it is played as the big twist. It's got the suspensive move music in the background. It's got the suspensive sort of the air about it. It is played for that sort of aura, but it's not because if you've seen any of the marketing, pretty much, you know this. You know this is coming, and when that is your big twist. It's it's not going to land, is it? It just doesn't. No. I mean, obviously, Terminator Two had this problem when that was sold with Arnie as the good guy. Spoiler alert for thirty five years ago, but you know, for, for, for thirty five. Do not even say twenty twenty years ago now? Twenty three years. God, I feel I wasn't alive then. When you feel old, yeah, you can't feel old if you're even alive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that, that just feels weird. That was three years before I was born, Jesus. But um, yeah, it just it, it's. I guess it's indicative of modern marketing, reeling because it's just when when you have to spoil that. To gamble on the fact that I mean, I guess that was a response to the anger that the first trailer was. That people were just like, "Oh, this looks terrible." They, they had to gamble on the on the on the twist having in there. I guess really that's the best way you can put it because you've got to really. I mean, when 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 your film's not doing well, I, I doubt it was. I mean, that was a, that was the trailer period where all Star Wars and everything was coming out, and it just wasn't really getting much sort of social media sort of buzz about it. And when you have to spoil a big twist, it's not going to go very well. And it's every, everything in this film just feels like it's desperately trying to clutch at straws of past franchise threads or plot points, and just try to arrange them in anything that seems coherent at all, or paying constant shameless homage to better films, and not in a good way that makes you feel nostalgic and warm like Jurassic World did, but in a way that makes you desperately desire to see either of the other two films, the first two films, again. And that's just what makes me just every time something happened to this film I was like that would have been pretty cool in the first two you know I remember that from the first two it's just it is just it's constantly trying to remind you of better films in my mind and it does it starts with some re- rather decent shots of the future war I and mean, that's what people wanted after number one they wanted doing that future war thing but that's not really what got me but it was good to see some of that it was, it was decent enough and the interesting incorporation of the original film, film footage and ideas was pretty good I like that but after that it rambles from endless endless unimaginative of unimpactful 12 year action sequences that are just occasionally broken up with these grown worthy quiet moments between plastic man Jay Courtney who's basically the main soldier from small soldiers remember that as plastic as he was and I Aldi own brand Linda Hamilton, Amelia Clark, who's just. It's <laughs> I just, like that. That's I mean, good. She's just, I, I, you know, I want to like her. I mean, she's, she's, she fits the role in Game of Thrones, but I think she needs a few big more roles before she can really penetrate Hollywood like this. I mean, it's just, it's she's not ready. The one, the one positive I will give Amelia Clark is she does look like Linda. She Hamilton. does. She does I mean, look like. It, it, it flatten the cheekbones a bit, maybe. I mean, you, just, mm. you, yeah, do, yeah. You, you just see Linda Hamilton in the in number two, just kicking every sort of ass and just annihilating everybody in a way. And then you see Amelia Clark here. I know it's younger, but you just see her being this fragile and you know led on I by Jay Cole. I wouldn't say she's. I think she's very independent. I, know, she's I think capable, she's very strong. I don't know. It's like, like I mean, we were seeing on the way over. It's like she spends most of the film wondering about her future, and by the end, she finally realizes that she can control her own future, Mm-mm. and then decides to go with the predestined path anyway. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, it's make your mind up, Amelia. I mean, this budget, the budget of this film was one hundred and fifty-five million dollars. Do you see where that went? Expensive CG, expensive which, which CG, looks quite bad which was in some totally parts. wasted. Uh-huh. So, I mean, some of it's really good, but there's bits where it looks unfinished. There's bits where it looks like it's still rendering yeah. on the screen. But even even like the big action set pieces didn't really. They just didn't have the feel. Oh. Of yeah, big exactly. they, they weren't like impactful, like in Terminator One and mm-hmm. Two. You know, not not just not memorable yeah. at all. Really, the chopper chase was just so CGI. You could see the CGI. I mean, some of the some of the action pieces you could see that was practical, but that was so CGI. It was actually unbearable to watch. It was it was like, it looked like the searchlights. You know, the the old searchlights sort of mm-hmm. intro for those films before that. Obviously, classic the classic intro before film played that's what it felt like it was literally just that panning over buildings it was it was awful CGI I mean none of the set pieces like you were saying have any weight because you barely care about the characters and the action is just so cookie cutter that you feel that the punches you feel the punches land but there's just no feeling of threat or emotional substance so you're just sitting there watching it but you don't feel anything but the uncomfortable vibrations in your seat you're just shaking not as bad as San Andreas a couple of weeks ago but you you know it, it is just it's just you're just sitting there shaking and it's like why am I shaking so much I don't care for this it's just so so much cheesy emotional 
you know, resonance as well. I mean, I do like that in some films. I'm, I'm quite a fan of it, but when it's so predictable and foreshadowing that is just so horrendously obvious from the very beginning, you know that it's going to pay off like that. There's no twist or turn. That's the predestined path. And in a film that especially, especially tries to make itself a new timeline, a new diversion of the series, instead decides to go on that same trodden path a million times, complemented by stupid Hans Zimmer horns in the background along with electronics and you know, a completely muddled musical score. It's just, ugh, it's just a mess. It's a complete hot mess. <sighs> good. Breathe. <laughs> there we go. Breathe. Not, not a good kind of hot mess. Uh, no, not a good it? kind no, of hot mess. No. You know, no. a bad kind of hot mess. Uh, Joe, what did you think? Uh, yeah, pretty much agree with everything. I think after you know Terminator Four, I, I think everybody realised nobody really cares that much about the war. It's it's, it's, it's that's not the interesting mm. thing. No. It's about cheese, Terminator, you know, you know it, it's always been about the Terminators versus you know man and yeah. machine and that like on a singular level, I think. But uh, yeah, just very, just very flat, really. It yeah. just wasn't was interesting at all. Exact same word. Yeah. Just everything, even like like with Jay Courtney and Amelia Clark as like as good as Amelia is in Game of Thrones. You could, both of them, you just kind of tell they were really yeah. acting. Like mm-hmm. Jay Courtney just reading lines. That's all he was. That's all he's there it's for. So he's so white bread. He's plain. Like there's just like even with the like even action stars not not except you know the big kind of buff action guys. The big guys. But, the, but yeah, the big guys. But <laughs> it, but they've got to have something. You know, like Tom Hardy. Like, yeah. Tom Hardy doesn't speak much in his big roles, like in Locke and Mad Max, and obviously being in The Dark Knight Rises, and then obviously he's in the Crayers film that's coming up later this year. He doesn't say much, but he he has that emphasis through mm-hmm. his looks. You look at Jai Courtney, and it's just. It's literally just it, it's it's like just a robot, man. yeah. It's, it's completely. <laughs> it's an unmoving. Oh, it, I it, mean, it, the best characters of the film were definitely uh, Arnie and J.K. Oh Simmons. yeah, Arnie's on complete top form in all of the yeah, Terminators. Li- the little parts with J.K. Simmons were very very entertaining. Yeah, I thought, yeah. but uh, all, overall, just nah. Yeah, J.K. Simmons was an interesting side plot, but then I mean, he's a police officer who's spotted Arnie in the in the past in 1984, and now realizes him in the future that he's there. He's sort of like I guess it's sort of a conspiracy theorist now that he's. Right, he's yeah. a whack job on the job yeah, whack and he's got a few good scenes obviously Arnie just completely steals all of it I mean he's, he's still funny but uh, there's, a, uh, there's a scene in the film involving a sort of what, what's the word for it it's like a police check in I suppose like a uh, um, 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 a, a, a wall of shame or something I don't know oh, like, the, the line up the line up yeah okay. police M- line up like mug shots yeah involving a police mug shot line up in the film and it's probably the lowest point in the franchise it's worse than the talk to the hand scene in terminator 3 it is the low it comes after this deadly serious sort of scene on the bridge with where there's a school bus and you know fear of death but not really because you know they're going to die and it's it just lurches from this everything's exploding and b- bouncing around and you feel like they're trying to do something and trying to make it impactful they're trying to make you feel like the balance of the world is in the palm of their hands but it just isn't it's just people lurching around in a school bus and in various other vehicles trying to avoid all of this all sort of cacophony of, of robots and other creatures that just you just don't care for it at all you just don't because there's no charisma on screen it's literally just arnie who's sitting there like hey remember when i was like the best part of every film i'm in but he has these other cardboard cutout actors to compliment me Mm. It's still the Schwarzenegger show, it's just he's joined by newer, blander people. Yep. No one as memorable as Under Hamilton, because that was never going to be beaten. Uh, and, shame. of course, the good news being it's the start of a trilogy. So we've got two more of these yeah. to expect before 2018. And, of course, obviously, we were thinking maybe, since they spoiled the big twist in this, now they've got Matt Smith in, and they haven't revealed anything, pretty much, about him, a few promo shots about his character. Mm-hmm. Don't get your hopes up. Nah. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Not spoilers, but I don't just, get your hopes up. I just think, from the beginning, I mean, I only saw the trailer like a few times, and I just thought, yep, too much spoilers. And then, even when it started, you know, I didn't even know it was going to be a 12-year. That's, no. that's what kind of did it. I just thought... Nah, if you're gonna have a really good Terminator movie, I'm sorry, it can't it can't be a twelve year. Exactly, there's just no you d- you just don't feel any weight you, of any of exactly. it. Exactly, you don't feel like the violence, or you, you never just feel vibration. You never feel a Terminator can like even even the T1000. You never feel it can like just crush you. You know, mm-hmm. it yeah. just fe- it just feels like oh okay, cheers oh. Okay. So I'd just say if you want to watch a Terminator film this weekend, just get the box set or get the this the box First set of one and two. two. Just just watch them back to back, <coughs> and then that's it. Boom, end. Yep. Just one and two. So is this a recommend or not? No, no. no every don't time, the, it. every time the theme plays, and every time something happens which apes the original two, you just want to watch the original two and not just bang your head against your cinema seat and cringe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a harsh way to put it, but it's true. Well, it's true. Uh, I mean, I kind of had fun with it in the first half. I was kind of just starting to. That's the thing. It's, it, you can only really enjoy it if you completely <laughs> disconnect and turn your brain off. And it shouldn't be the case I for hate, a Terminator film. It so shouldn't be a case for a Terminator film. You shouldn't have to. Yeah. Um, you know, just forget about any kind of lo- like logic. You should be able to 
following a, a plot where you know an original interest in plot this didn't have that it was very flat mm. and, and towards the end she did not care and couldn't wait for it to be over that's that's yeah, I hate that scene though. The, the I turn your too. brain off. You shouldn't have to. Pe- stop being lazy. I know. It. I hate it too. But it's true. It, it has, in this instance, it yeah, is true. Yeah. Terminator has so much potential as a franchise, but it's just it's sequel after sequel of crap. Mm-hmm. This, oh, mm-hmm. they had so much to build on for number two, but you know, I, ah, it's I a will disappointment. Also, not recommend. Uh, from I'll be back to back to black. Ching. You've been waiting for that for so long, haven't you? I yeah. thought of that during Terminator because that's how bored I was. Oh yeah. the, the guy, oh, there was a guy on the right sit next to us who was like, he was loving it. He did. Terminator. Terminator. He, he was the most entertaining part of Terminator. Well, there you go. Uh, it's good to see somebody enjoyed it. It's out today, but mm, uh, don't bother. If Mad Max is on, go say that instead. Yeah, it's exactly un- middle un- of the road. Unfortunately, Mad Max is not out. Well, get Terminator 2 and watch there it. There you go. <laughs> as middle of the road film as it comes. Uh, before we have a little break for some local music on the half hour we're going to do Amy which is a new documentary by um, Asif Kapadia who did Senna a couple of years ago uh, and this is a story of Amy Winehouse who died tragically in 2000